Good evening. Welcome to the Clan Podcast. This is officially season two. Tonight, I'm your host, Manny White Eagle. Sitting beside me is my co-host, Miko Sampson. Zooming with us all the way up north from Red Lake is the 17th season of basketball coaching, uh, school board running, Chris Jordan. <laughs> Welcome, Chris. How are you? Hey, man, I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having oh, me. Oh, we're glad to have you. It looks really sunny up there. <laughs> yeah, it's finally beautiful. It's uh, 76, so it's not hot. So Ooh, right, right. <laughs> take it. That's oh, yeah. Perfect outdoor weather for up north Minnesota. Yeah. Exactly. So, Chris, you're running for school board, right? How's that going? Yeah, so um, tomorrow, I mean, Tuesday is the what they call the primary elections. So those are uh, those there. I believe there's out of that, there will be um, eight people that will move on to the general elections in November. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then from there, four people will be uh, elected to serve a four year term up here in Red Lake. So and when's the final winner get decided then uh, who's taking it? It would be in November, along with all the other, uh, you know, like the state races, uh, congressional and that kind of stuff. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah. And so yeah. this isn't your first rodeo, as you would say, huh? that you've been running before. Yeah. So in, uh, I ran. Uh, quite a few years back and I, I came in fourth, I believe. And then I was appointed to fill a year and a half term in, nine, in uh, 13 and 14. Uh, the board chair at the time, Arnold Pemberton, he's a long, long time uh, serving school board member up here. He, he had passed away. Oh. And that's, uh, so that's when that action was taken. And then in 2016, I ran and I came in uh, second with 805 votes and I got to serve a four year term between uh, 16 and 2020. Wow. Right on. I think that's really, really um, something that I, I don't know if enough people have taken into consideration is that you can really create positive impact in your community by being on these boards, by helping making these choices and decisions. Um, is there anything that's uh, on the ballot or what you guys are looking to do with the next couple of years? Are you guys looking forward to any projects or anything coming up? Well, you know, you, you did make a good point there as far as, um, you know, the, the impact that one can make while uh, serving on the board. And um, and the unique thing about us here in Red Lake is that we're a, we're a public school within a, a closed reservation. Right, yeah. So we're, we're pretty much, you know, 99 point some percent uh, native, right? The district, our, our students and our elected board is people from the community. And, and so that means we're all Red Lakers. Mm -hmm. So we can um, do things like one of, one of the things I, I was uh, kind of, I guess you could say I'm proud about when, with, that, uh, with that term last time was I, I got it written into policy where our culture and language would be pushed more into, the, into uh, our, our schools. Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know if how it was where you guys went to school, but even me going to school up here in Red Lake back in the day, uh, Ojibwe was the last room down the hall on the left, you know, and you went there every five to seven days, right? And they taught you uh, bear, dog, you know, cat, right? <laughs> so very, very basic stuff, you know? They <clears throat> So some moves were made here and we got a, we got a really nice uh, language and culture department right now. And three of them are Red Lakers, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I believe they're committed, uh, they're very knowledgeable. So by writing that uh, into policy now, it meant that it will, regardless of a new superintendent or if, let's say I got voted off the board, which, which happened, right? <laughs> it was wrote, wrote into policy that our language would stay a priority. Wow. So it's pushed into every classrooms. And, and it's a really beautiful thing as far as we have a lot of signage. You know, on the, on the floors, on the walls, um, got a lot of staff, you know, we meet, meet staff in the hall, there's, there's, there's some language interchange, and even from our non-Native staff, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they uh, bought into it, and, they, and uh, so it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing to, to see that happening, and our kids are getting exposed more to their culture, whereas, you know, what we just kind of learned about the boarding schools, right, so what, what, what we tried to do was to use our schools now to push it back in. Yeah. 
to give it to our kids, right? When it used to be to t- schools are used to take it away. So we kind of flipped the script on that, which is uh, something that, that, that I was really, really uh, proud to see, you know, to get done before the, uh, you know, because you know you're going out, right? When after you uh, election in November, right? You, and then it turns over in January. So, so we're able to get, uh, get uh, you know, with support from the other board members, of course, as well. So, so that's a unique thing about about Red Lake is is we can do that kind of stuff because, and, and the, the board is seven people, so it's in all of our best interests, right? Mm-hmm. To, to to push our culture, and that might be that might not be the case in in, in other school districts where there are native kids, you know? Right, that's very true. Especially when you think about schools here in the city that do have a native population. They are trying, they are doing certain things, but I think especially like you're saying, when the entire school and population is very well steeped in it, uh, yeah. it's, it's gonna create a positive impact, especially for those uh, that are um, connected to that culture, that's part of their their um, their own geneity. Uh, but also even like you're saying, the non-natives, the teachers uh, yeah. also can benefit from this as well because it really does start to create a stronger community uh, and a much more stronger understanding and respect, uh, mutual respect across the board. So I think that's really amazing. Uh, there are other places and instances where that type of model is definitely showing through. And even here at the MAIC, uh, the American Indian Center, we've been trying to get on that as well as far as creating the signage, you know, just creating spaces uh, for language to be more common, as they say, use it or lose it, you know. So like, uh, especially when you think about schools, it's good that we have it there. But I, I would even say go further, you know, go go to the road signs, go to, you know, your public spaces and, and um, make that part of something that the children are also helping implement and you know teaching these languages uh, throughout the community. Um, so right. I think that's really cool. Definitely, like if you go to another country, if you go to another um, land or territory, you're going to run into their language. And I think that's uh, one of the steps that we can do to help uh, promote that, but also help um, encourage other people to be respectful of it, of it and uh, uphold it as well. Because we can go to Paris, we can go to France, we can go to Germany, we can learn their language, learn how to greet each other, uh, just the same as we can here. And so I definitely recommend anybody, wherever, whatever land you're on, take a moment, learn the language, learn how to greet and <laughs> learn how to say thank you at least you know uh, yeah. that's, and that's where it starts like you're saying you know beyond that learning things like animals and um you know whatever it might be identifying things but also things that are commonplace so uh the bathroom you know make sure uh especially in a, in a native school i would even almost say like if you need to use a restroom make sure you speak our language <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> otherwise you're not gonna go no, <laughs> um, you know this would be a lot, a lot harder to implement those policies but definitely that uh the idea is there where such things as immersion schools and things like that definitely have seen results of uh, people being able to be Im- totally immersed in their language and uh, start utilizing it a lot more. So that's really cool. I really thank you for your work and what you've done. And like you're saying, you know, it's intermittent, meaning that when you get in, you do what you can while you're there, knowing that, you know, you might not be there the next term. And hopefully whatever you did or started would be uh, something that was um, perpetuated or carried on by the next terms and next. Uh, right so very good. I hope you uh, make your make your speech and make make the people recognize the work that you're doing and and hopefully you can get back in there for another time. Oh yeah, that was appreciate cool. that, man. So um, we got another topic that we want to bring up. So you wear many hats. You're not just um, a school board member. You also have been a coach for 17 seasons for the Red Lake basketball team. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's been uh, probably one of the one of the highlights highlights of uh, of my career, I guess. Uh, is, is somehow. And it's an interesting story how I got into coaching was uh, I have a brother who uh, was in second grade and we actually played in a tournament at the Indian Center, right? And, he, so oh, he saw, wow. <laughs> and we played, so he saw us getting paid. He's like, oh, can you make money playing basketball? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, you can make a little bit, you know, if you, you take this level. I said, but I, I started talking about um, pro contracts, right? I forget who it was back then, but they had just inked a, a, a big deal, so... He said, Chris, will you teach me how to play basketball? So he's in second grade. So, so I said, all right, we'll check it out my first year in the school. And, and we started a little after school program for uh, third through fifth grade. And that's kind of how I got my start. I stayed, uh, stayed. then I, uh, the next year I applied for the middle school boys coach. And that's where I, I, I've been for uh, 16 years after that, you know, and then it was, it was just up until last year where I, I moved up to the varsity level as, a, as an assistant. Wow. Coach. So, so that's kind of the, the history on coaching and how I got started with it. And, and I seriously had no idea that it would turn into what it turned into. You know, a lot of them boys 
that that uh, started then uh, with, with my brother, they were the first team that ended up going on to state and for our little, we had a four year run with, with the boys program. So wow. <laughs> I wanted to watch these kids, you know, come in and they, they couldn't quite dribble or someone couldn't hit the rim, you know, in third and fourth, fifth grade. So uh, to, to watch them turn into to the uh, athletes that they did, right? And, and basketball in, in Red Lake and, and like many native communities, it, it's a really big thing, you know? And up here, it's, it, it, uh, I like how it brings the community just together you know we pack out the gym and, and oh yeah very well you know what i mean we go to other gyms everybody loves to have red lake on their on their because uh, we because uh, we bring we bring the and we buy a lot of snacks right <laughs> <laughs> a lot of so snacks. We, we, we yeah we pack the stands you know so we had to help help run you know the the, the through it all you know, to meet all these young people and, and uh, just wonder, wonder what the next kids are going to be like, you know, and then just nonstop, even until this day, it's been fun watching these kids, uh, boys and girls, you know, grow up to be um, the, the basketball players. And then now it's it's, uh, it's really fun to watch them uh, you know, um, to that level, you know, after 17 years, you know, uh, starting to see them become uh, young adults now, mm-hmm. you know, and parents. And, and we've got more more kids now that are going on to higher education than, than, you know, I can remember. Wow. Yeah. And a lot of them are using their uh, athletic skills. Mm-hmm. Right. For the scholarships uh, or? Yeah. Yeah. Getting offers. Uh, we had, you know, we had um, a lot of people might hear that we had uh, two D1 players, you know, uh, that, that came out of Red Lake. So. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Grace White, Rob McLean. Uh, and now, now they're turned out to be uh, great role models, you know. Exactly, all these great players, you know, they got to start somewhere. And what greater, what greater uh, coach to teach them than you, you know, from yeah. like middle school on up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh, so it's been an unbelievable uh, run, you know, and it's taken me uh, a lot of places, you know, across country and then on up into Canada, you know, uh, with with Team Minnesota, which is another thing that I'm really really excited about. You know, so basketball kind of led me to that. I was originally just going to be a coach back in 2016 as uh, well, for the 2017 games up in Toronto. So I um, so I agreed to do it and I was going to coach a team and then I, it ended up kind of almost falling apart. And I was like, well, knowing all these kids in Minnesota, you know, from coaching all these native kids, uh, I said, man, uh, we got to go up there, man. You know, we have we have too much talent and I felt we could do good. And so luckily, uh, the, the, the Indigenous Games Council, you know, they, they gave me a shot as, as what they call the uh, it's team captain, I guess. They have a French word for it, chef de mission. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like so I'm a chef, you know, it's another hat. I'm a chef <laughs> and a grill master. So, yeah. But, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but, yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, Team Minnesota has it, it. I didn't quite know what I was getting into, and uh, uh, but I got the chance. So we brought up uh, five basketball teams up to Toronto back in 2017, and that was it was an amazing experience, you know. And 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 I I, I never had been involved with the games um, as an athlete. I, I did get involved in one in uh, Milwaukee, now you know. Oh yeah, and then. Uh, and then, but that was as a coach, you know, but so I didn't know that the, the other, the organizing part about it, but I was like, give me a shot. I think we can do it. And so we, we ended up going up there and um, with, with the, uh, with the five teams, we, we ended up bringing home and I got them here. Uh-oh. So we brought home a Whoa. gold medal with the 14 U team. I hope, I hope. And wow. these things are, these are beautiful, heavy. I was gonna say that. That's, that's amazing. amazing. That's like, <laughs> you know. So we brought home one of those at the 14 new boys, with which I got to coach, which was also super fun. Nice. Our 19 new boys brought home the silver. They they only lost uh, the championship game against uh, Washington. Wow. And and it, that was a good team right there too. And then uh, we had brought two of the bronze. Wow. Bronze medals with the uh, 14 new girls. And um. 16 new boys so so we brought up about a group was about 70 people you know so we were we were one of the smaller groups uh if you maxed out in all sports which there are uh 16 sports i believe Mm -hmm. uh you would bring 500 and some people you know so so 
Games are huge, and, and they're going on actually in 345 days. Right. The countdown starts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Up Dude, in right? Halifax, Nova Scotia. Ooh, that's where they're at this year or next year? Yep. That's where the, and that's the home of the Micmac tribe. Wow. Oh, right you can say it. And they got some amazing history over there. It's, uh, you know, going back, they got written stuff back into the 1500s, you know. Man. So they're, they're expecting 5,000 athletes from over 750 tribal nations. It's uh, and, and they're really pushing this uh, these games to uh, have have it. Uh, you know, they sort of mark fifty percent sport, but fifty percent culture. Oh. Well. You know, so it's a week long event, and um, so when you're not playing, you know, they they got uh, athletes villages they call them. It's it's really really modeled after the Olympics, and 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 Toronto blew my mind. You know, as far as how uh, well coordinated it was. But also just just the whole experience of it all, you know. We we only brought basketball teams, but it was more than basketball. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, sure. A lot of these a lot of these kids met a lot of kids from all over Turtle Island. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's a it's a really uh, amazing event, and so that's kind of what um, another thing I'm working on over the summer is we, we we're hosting tryouts in different locations, and so we're we're, we're going through that process of selecting our teams, you know, who are athletes. And it's been fun to meet uh, kids and see talent from all over Minnesota, mm. you know, as, as we held a couple of tryouts so far and we got some more, some more coming up. So that's, uh, that's what I'm super excited about. And, and also kind of nervous about, and, uh, <laughs> about, and, right. uh, cause this year we're, we're adding, so we're adding, uh, basketball, volleyball, baseball, softball, wrestling, athletics, and swimming, and golf. So our group's going to go from about 70 to about 200. Wow. Wow. Is, is the plan. Yeah. And then and, uh, what, some of the challenges are, you know, we're pretty much all volunteers, you know, mm-hmm. the, the coaches that, that I find um, that, you know, they're, so that's, uh, that's the neat thing about it. And I think up until 2017, the last time Team Minnesota might have been uh, at a game was in Denver, which is 2006. Right. Wow. So that's really cool. I think you just mentioned too, like the idea of tryouts being something, you know, pretty formidable and definitely something in uh, coming down the pipeline, if you will. Um, how, how can kids, the youth, uh, anybody that's interested, how do they get started into that path of um, trying to get involved into the Indigenous games? And also uh, even for themselves, if, like you're saying, you know, just start coaching yourself, just start, you know, practicing, find somebody that's willing to work with you. Uh, but what is it? What are the steps? What are they? Right, it's not too late, is it? <laughs> yeah, right. Like no. how long, how long no, do they no, have? Definitely. No, the, the ball, the ball is just kind of getting rolling as far as the um the the tryout part you mm-hmm. know we've i've been meeting with with, with some of the adults who are, are going to help me organize and um but we've just so we've only had two tryouts for basketball we did one up north here then we did one down south so we're going to try to have one in the center we try to hit the three uh three kind of locations you know so we hit everybody we do a north a central and a south so we're really hoping we can get Mille Lacs. They got a brand new, uh, beautiful center in the D1 community of their Mille Lacs. So we're really hoping we can then uh, can host out of there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Shockby was nice enough to let us host out of uh, Dakota. Oh wow! wow. Yeah, we got nice their gym, gym. <laughs> and then um, Cass Lake. You know, uh, their high school, and then they're offering uh, uh, their Onigum. They got a beautiful facility in Onigum. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, but. It's uh, really it's nice. New too, right? Huh? It's newer too, right? Like they just yeah. played it. Yeah. Yeah, we uh I know we used it for the uh we were organizing for the 2020 games, which got all shut down to COVID, right? Oh. Uh, we were organized, we were ready to go, and man, we had some some very talented kids that, that kind of what they call aged out now, you know what I mean? So they're gonna miss. And that's, that's kind of uh the bummer part of the games is you know, only being every three years, but now yeah. we're four years, you know. Right. Yeah. All right. Man, but um, You're but in the yeah, last two years. Uh, so get in on your freshman year, <laughs> and then you can get on your senior year too. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's there, there's uh age requirements of it where there's a 19 u division, a 16 u and a 14 u. But we have a, a a Facebook page that we use, mm-hmm. and I uh, I I I sent it over there to uh, Manny. So I don't know if you, you're able to throw it out. Or I'll say yeah, we'll we'll put it in the chat for you. Definitely make yeah, sure. Yeah, you can throw that in there. Uh, my email might be the best way. You know, to uh, 
get a hold of me. You know, sometimes my, I, I got a, a three-year-old. Sometimes she's got my phone. So just when it calls, <laughs> silenced, you know what I mean? So that might not always be the best way to get a hold of me, but uh, that, that email that I sent over would be perfect. And we want, you know, of course, you know, we, we, we want to send over the best, right? To compete because we will be competing internationally, right? Right. And so, you know, if we got, and what I found out last time is we had like some amazing uh, swimmers, you know, I, I've never, uh, I swim in Red Lake, you know, what I mean? but I've never, <laughs> uh, so I know a little about competitive swimming, you know, but I found out we had, we had a, a, a native kid out in, uh, Minnesota, who was setting uh, some, you know, records and competing at the junior Olympic level. And, uh, and, and I was like, wow, you know, and meeting wrestlers, that's another thing, you know, I have no, so I have no experience in some of these sports, but meeting uh, interested people, you know, so people just, just, you know, reach out, try to, try to get hold of me. You know, the Facebook page is a, is a great one. Mm -hmm. Email be even better, but, um, and then we, you know, we share information on there as well. And that's, you know, I appreciate coming on here and hopefully we get the word out because we want to hit every, if I can hit every kid uh, of native descent, you know, or, or uh, you can, you can be a descendant or, or uh, enroll. So mm -hmm. there's lots of kids in Minnesota that, that fit those two categories, but maybe they're, they're, uh, they're not connected to the res. Right. It's kind of like you know how how I am I suppose and you know so I know a lot of kids on the res and different reses but I might not know all the kids in the metro area right where, right which is kind of what I found out uh, for the 2020 games was there's there's a lot of kids so the more uh, you know people can help me get the word out about about these games and um, and Team Minnesota and you know we can. Uh, you know, get a, if we have to have tryouts for, uh, you know, certain sports, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. You know what I mean? So there's, there's, there's some team sports and then there's individual sports like track, you know, athletics, they call it, uh, swimming, uh, wrestling, where you don't need to necessarily have a team, right? And then we have the team sports, basketball, which, of course, is the most popular. So, you know, we, we probably have over 100 and some kids try out again. You know what I mean? And um and uh, and we'll we'll see how it goes, man. And uh, funding is the other part. You know, we we got uh, like I said, we're a volunteer organization. We don't have a true funding source. So in the past, what really helped was all tribes kind of that that um had an athlete. They just sponsored that athlete. You know, so that was the uh, oh wow, cost uh, food, uniforms. You know, we had some really really nice uniforms. We went with the maroon and gold. Yeah. So we were one of the only um, maroon and gold teams. I remember that year. <laughs> yeah, so it I was, was on uh, the other side, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Team Wisconsin will be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. The black uh, they're bringing, outfits. They're bringing like three hundred and some kids. Wow, Team Wisconsin is. Yeah, so they're they're doing big things over there, man. They really support the games, you know, and that's what that's what I'm finding now. As as um, you know, as I was able to attend a uh, council meeting for NAG, they call it, N-A-I-G, NAG Council, and to see how the, the behind the scenes of it, you know what I mean? And, and to learn about, about the inner workings, I guess these games are phenomenal, man. And, and so I'm really glad and excited, you know, blessed to be a part of it and, and to, to do the work that I do, which will then in turn, you know, is gonna create a lot of memories for a lot of kids. For you know? sure. That's, so that, that's, uh, that's the fun part about all the uh, the organizing and the, the energy that goes into uh, to, you know what it takes to, to organize. So we're we're hoping we're going to pursue some avenues for funding, and, and I think that uh, you know our, our our tribes will be on board again to support our our indigenous youth to go up and experience this. So. Absolutely. I think anybody that was willing to support our indigenous youth here in Minnesota would, you know, find the opportunity to um, have a donation place or something for you to uh, 
once you have that set up, we'll go ahead and share that with us. And we'll be happy to pass that along for folks that want to help cool. support, even if they aren't necessarily a tribe or uh, an entity oh, yeah. organization, we can still support these youth for uh, whatever it is that they're in. And so I'm just looking at the, um, uh, the games list that they have of the events that they're possible. And so yeah. if, again, also, if you know somebody, if you know a native student, if you know somebody that is good at one of these things or is passionate about that, archery, athletics, badminton, baseball, basketball, volleyball, kayaking, lacrosse, golf, rifle shooting, soccer, softball, swimming, volleyball, and wrestling, boys and girls, any of them, uh, if they're into that kind of a thing, encourage right. them, support them. We can get them, you know, going in a good direction where they can really feel uh, accomplished for one thing, but also realize that, you know, again, like we turn around and you help your community, you create a positive impact, you create, you know, uh, good, good vibes just from doing something that you enjoy. And so that's a really amazing thing. And so again, uh, once you find out that information for us, uh, share it with us and we'll share it to our followers that, you know, you can support Team Minnesota to the NAIG 2023. So that'd be really interesting. I'm really excited for you. And definitely the, uh, the anticipation is already building. Like you're saying, you got the countdown going and you're looking forward to the uh, possibility of these new events and these new athletes and these different fields and um, sports. And so that's really, uh, really, really amazing. I really... I'm, a, I'm proud of you. <laughs> uh, it takes, right, cool. it's, it's something definitely that it builds up over time, but definitely recognizing the uh, the potential, you know, like you're saying, you brought a team, uh, five teams of basketball players and, yeah. and bear witness to all of the plethora of arts of, of sports that an, an athlete can be involved in. And so I think that's really good that you're starting that momentum here in Minnesota and get everybody involved and making them aware, you know, this is a, an avenue that you can pursue. It's potential. Uh, like you're saying, you know, for some people that can become lucrative, but also in, in, in the long run, eventually, even for your especially i think you can have a job you can have a career in this and so um, oh yeah there's definitely definitely, definitely lots to share so thank you kind yes. of circling back what you said about the 2020 games and how they got shut down you know because of what happened have you yeah. noticed a hardship or did it change your style of coaching for like the last two years or how right. did you navigate yourself and the team through the last two years then right oh yeah well it was um it was super challenging you know some of the some of the uh like some of the challenges were rarely had the um, the same group of players. You know what I mean? Oh, you know, so and so's out. We got three kids out on on a uh, quarantine. You mm. know, oh, right. coaches out with quarantine. You know, oh. <laughs> so we we rarely had a uh, 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 you know, like say the starting five was rarely all together throughout the whole season. You wow. know? And, and and another thing that that was affected was um you know kids trying to get back into the swing of school after being out so then your grades are affected you know mm, yeah so there's there's requirements you know of of uh eligibility for a school athlete and so those those are some of the challenges that that i saw for you know as as a coach so we uh so we had a, a super challenging but it was, but on the other side, it was so fun to get to talk to the kids, you know, for a lot of times we were talking to kids like this. Oh, wow. On a screen like this. <laughs> we were talking to our players. We can't practice our, you know, we got. So to be able, and then, because uh, we, we were one school who stayed uh, close longer than most. Hmm. You know? So we stayed in the distance learning model. But when you would uh, talk to the kids, they're like, man, I want to be back in school. You know what I mean? They, right. They're friends. They, uh, they learned better, you know, having, having that teacher right there. So um, so those are the challenges, man, we're, we're dealing with, with all the, uh, then the constant change. You know, there was um, one week it's this, next week it's that, you know, the fans, right? Oh, you can have two fans. Oh, now we can have more fans. So, so we, we learned to be fluid, you know? Mm-hmm and not be so set in stone it's just like show up today and let's see what happens today and then uh tomorrow will be a new day we'll see what happens there so so that's what as far as challenges with covid man that was that was the biggest thing all right on a more positive note if anyone uh youth watching this show here would uh, what would you recommend to them if they want to possibly be an athlete or don't you know if they're know if they're sure yet or not what would you recommend to them if they want to maybe start picking up a ball and you know shooting hoop and yeah. doing it on the team level. Yeah, so, that's a good question. I, I I do encourage a lot. You know, it's part. Of, so in my work here with the tribe, I, I get to do a lot of. Um, on top of the counseling, is do a lot of fun activities. So it's uh, I do at school. Um, we're we're really pushing lacrosse. Um, reintroducing, we're calling it. You know, but. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of tell them the benefits of it. Um, 
you know, it's it's fun. I tell them it's fun. It's uh, and that's one thing we try to do is at, at the youth level is really make it fun, not so much about competing. Right. Um, uh, and so I never push a kid though. You know, even my own personal kids, I never push them to do, to do it. So sometimes you push a kid early and and they're not going to want to do it. You know, but they might do it. But later on, a kid who you didn't think was going to play starts playing. So I would just. Uh, you know, encourage the, there's, there's health benefits of it. You know, I, I try to share that as well, you know, being, being on a team and, and the things that you learn by being an athlete are things that are going to help you later in life. You know, and a lot of us, we didn't realize that when we were growing up, right. When we weren't listening to our coaches, because so we didn't realize a lot of those little nuggets that they're stuff that to us. Oh, that's really going to make sense later on. man. You know, right. why he said that, you know, so that's uh, the way I, I, I try to do it is is just make it fun and um, try to get a kid to, to you know, because when I get them, nobody's good, right? That's what I tell kids. They get frustrated. I, they can't hit the rim or they can't <laughs> hit the ball. And I'm like, I was like, hey, nobody's nobody's good at third, fourth grade. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I just encourage them to come, keep coming back. You're going to get better. You're going to get better. As long as you put it into work, you're going to get better. So. Mm-hmm. And and some kids have, you know what I mean. Some kids have gotten real better. So it's it's been it's been fun, you know what I mean. It's it's a, it's a fun job. It's very uh, it's not mundane, you know. You never know what you're gonna face when you work with kids, man. You know, especially uh, kids of all ages. Is there any places particular that you uh, know, like is like you know, particularly for your community there in Red Lake, where kids can just go and like get ball like assistance if they can find any coaches or if they can find a space that they can play outside inside? Can you let them all know where? The, I'm pretty sure most of them know, <laughs> but in case they're in yeah. case they just are being you know some type of way and they just need to be told, hey, go here. Uh, where where would we go to play ball with you? Uh, Boys and Girls Club is a good spot. You know, for the for the younger ones, and then um, like during the summer, we we in the afternoons we keep our gym open. We uh, some of our middle school, some of our high school, and some of our uh, current college athletes, you know, come back and, and work out in the gym with us. And mm. and um, that's so we do middle school, high school, like I said, with that. And um, but we we have hosted some camps as well. Um, one of one of our former uh, athletes, Grace White, held a camp up here for kids. Oh, wow. It was well, well attended, you know, even uh, a few people from off the rest came up, <laughs> wow. you know, because um, so and, and she brought up some teammates. She, she uh, finished her career in Valparaiso. So she brought up some uh, teammates and, and they, they worked with the kids and it went great. And uh, there's another one we got planned here before school starts as well. So we we do offer a lot of camps, clinics here here in Red Lake. And it's um, so, you know, just just stay watching for for uh, information on, on that. Uh, I know it's coming up in a, in a couple of weeks here. I just haven't got the details on that, but yeah, there's lots of places, lots of places to play basketball. And, uh, you know, it's almost football time now, you know, so we're switching the gears here a little bit and uh, rolling out football for the middle school and high school. And then uh, like I mentioned, the lacrosse uh, plan, you know, there's there's a big camp being held up in Fond du Lac next, next week. Oh. So I'm taking a group out there and a group out of the out of the Twin Cities, actually, homegrown lacrosse. Oh, nice. We're going back to our roots. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> you know, and that that's one thing I like about that sport is the cultural connection to it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's our sport, right? Right. We didn't know. Uh, so a lot of a lot of our people ain't playing it no more. It used to be, you know, it used to uh, be they used to play medicine games, you know, to heal, right? Right. And so there's a lot of cool aspects to that game that I like. A lot of language, you know, can be infused into that game. So that's that's one thing we're going to really focus on this fall is, is uh, where are our younger groups because um, right now we haven't been able to organize uh, uh, for Team Minnesota, a lacrosse team, because we just didn't have enough of our kids at that level, you know. Right, yeah. Organized, you know, so, so right. hopefully uh, as, when the games go to 2027, you know, we might have a, hoping have a lacrosse team. You know? Right. Yeah. Maybe some, maybe it's some kids that'll be at that camp next week. You know, it's going to be Indian kids from all over the res, all over the, all over the state, I should say, are going to be heading over to Fond du Lac next week. Cool. Right <laughs> on. Yeah. I think that's definitely something that's uh, 
like you're saying, you know, something that was kind of taken away and we're kind of bringing it back and it's taken a while. Cause even for me, um, I'm Seneca from upstate New York and within, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, within our school systems that are just off the territory, they also are, you know, turning their heads towards the poss possibility of having a lacrosse team. And I was so bummed out because they didn't have one when I was a senior in high school, the year after they got one and oh. lo and behold, you know, it's like a, it's a town right off the edge of the res. And so all the native kids went and all the native oh. kids represented and like all the native kids tore up all the other kids <laughs> uh, yeah it was cool. part of our, our culture you know and i think that's yeah. really cool to bring it back to have you know uh in these public spaces like you know like we have a ball team we could have a lacrosse team you know and that's very possible definitely, definitely I, man so my my goal one of my goals is to uh, hopefully you know get a dedicated field built to it oh right yeah that'd be amazing yeah, yeah. and it's one of the most heavily scholarship sports now Right. Yeah. A lot of people are paying attention to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's huge. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the, one of the fastest growing sports as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our, our people are going pro at it. You when know? you guys go back to the camps and all that for the lacrosse revitalization, is it going to be the traditional like wooden um, sticks or is it going to be like the more modern approach? To, um, you know, we haven't had been, been able to have it in, in a couple of years. So I'm not in the past. We, we did a mixture of both. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, one is yeah. everyone that prefers uh, which one? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, I found out in <laughs> personal experience, the kids like the, uh, they like the scoop with the modern, but they, they, um, they like the, uh, the, the traditional game as well without all the equipment. Yeah. yeah. So it was weird. We, we, uh, you know, when you start a program, you want to provide safety equipment, right? So, man, it took a while, and finally I was lucky to get uh, some equipment. And we geared them all up head to toe, you know. It's <laughs> as well, man, you know, maybe yep. 200 bucks a kid. And we gear them all up, and be like, man, I'm too hot. And they start to <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, you know, I, I don't know. Our people used to play without gear, you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm just excited that, that um, the people organizing this were able to uh, – to get it going again and then i really hope that because we were we man we were going good we were going good before covid right yeah Lots of awesome activities going on and then it's uh so it's kind of been a struggle to uh to get get uh the numbers you know to where we were but but i'm, I'm hopeful man i'm hopeful we're, we're we'll, uh, we'll get back there we'll get back up there but um, yeah. in the meantime, Chris sent in actually a few slides he wanted us to show us and uh, kind of describe about kind of circling back to the indigenous games um, aspect of, uh, you know, what Chris does and all that. But in the meantime, also, if you haven't got your sign ins in for tonight's uh, show, please sign in. It helps us earn our grant recognition as well as enters you into tonight's raffle for 20 bucks to target. So without further ado, my AV tech will uh, take yeah. us out of the picture. Yeah. And play that slideshow and you can kind of describe uh, each picture about, you know, or what was happening. <laughs> All right, cool. On the slide. Cool. Please be with us momentarily. Oh, there we go. All right. There we go. All right, so this was the six, the 16 new girls team, the only team that didn't medal, but I had only, uh, they only lost one game. Yeah, and they wow. missed. They missed the medal round. Oh man! On a technicality tiebreaker that went to the third thing. Oh man! We had to go this close, man. So, Jeez. What, what, what an amazing squad right there. You know what I mean? And, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I got to help coach that one as well. Uh, I recognize Gerald, uh, legendary Gerald Kingbird in the back there, helped me coach as well. His daughter's on the team. Twenty-one. My daughter was number twenty-two. I have 22 awesome. mean machine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam Roy, former Lady Warrior athlete. Uh, she helped coach as well. And she's going to she's gonna uh, come back and help us again. She's way on the far right there. So Coach Kingbird, he's going to help me as well. Uh, he drove. They both drove. Uh, we all drove all the way to Toronto. But it was, it was amazing. Yeah. So that was that was after they got their fifth place news. So. Right. Wow. That's awesome. Well, and there's the bling. Yeah, <laughs> shining. Yeah, man. Bling. So yeah, <laughs> gold, awesome. silver, and then he, so we we uh we switched to the traditional uh, uh, Dakota name, right, for Minnesota. Uh, oh, okay. Minnesota. And and we're gonna so we're gonna come up with our own flag where we 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 kicked the idea around of um 
of maybe like a logo contest for the flag so that instead of coming in under the state of Minnesota flag, mm. coming in under our own. Oh. An indigenous flag. Ahead. Yes, sir. Right yes, sir. Because we, we, we've seen what's on that Minnesota flag, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly. Mm. <laughs> so that's, uh, this was a logo created. Uh, I, got a, I got a guy, he's the regional director on, on the night council, and he's the one who kind of kind of uh, help me get into this position, right? So we could make that happen there. But he uh, he found somebody, he's down to uh, that design this logo. And, and a lot of people really complimented on this logo. We give out little buttons. So one part of the games is they everybody gets like a pin, okay? And it's your team name or, or you design or you can make whatever you want. So you give each kid a handful of pins and they go around and you trade pins. So it kind of encourages our kids meeting kids from other places. Oh. So as a trading thing, it's a big part of the games and, 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 and I had no, no idea about it, but, but we were able to do it and it was a big hit. So, uh, so this is the logo we put on the pins. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Cause like actually it. Wisconsin is shaped like that too. Yeah. You know, it looks very, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, is there more? We lost it. Oh, <laughs> I think that might have been. There was only four pictures on the slide, so oh, there might have been one other one. I think. Oh, the oh one? okay. The last one. Yeah. yeah. It was just. It was just. I. Uh, it was mainly the teams, you know. And, uh, oh. I was gonna tell some stories about the teams. Uh, I think our AV tech is pulling it up. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> hey, that's all right. That's all right. That must be all you got, then. Yeah. We got that one. Okay, you're right here, 14U. This is the, the gold medal team right here. Uh -huh. Woo. Yeah. So due to injuries, we only ended up with five players for championship game. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so they yeah. had a full game. <laughs> so, yep, uh, early, early on, there, you know, so it was. And then what we play is what the FIBA rules, okay? So when you want to time out, you can't just call time out and the ref blows the whistle time out like here in the States. You go to the score clock and you say, uh, request a timeout. And then the next dead ball is when you get your timeout. Man, <laughs> you got to wait. Yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. so it's, it, was, it was different, you know, to, to learn that. And then, the, you know, the three-point line is further back. Uh, wow. But um, but this you know, shot clock, you know, but um, this this crew right here uh, in, the, in the pool play, you know, just kind of got did everybody – uh, uh, pretty good, and then they they made it to the gold medal. Played British Columbia, and the gym was was crazy, man. It was it was super packed with with fans, you know, because British Columbia they bring their five hundred some as a team, right? So they were super loud, and man, our kids. It went down to the to the to the wire, and free throws. One of our kids uh, missed one. Our kid got the rebound with a couple seconds left. Went back up, gets fouled, and then he goes drains both free throws, man. For the gold medal at the Indigenous Games at, at 14 years old. Oof. Oh man, that's yeah. a story. <laughs> yeah. So to, this was you have to reenact was, that one. <laughs> this team right here, man. So it was uh it was, it was pretty fun to be a, to be a part of that. And wow, yeah. So the, you know, top bring on the top prize, you know. So that was it was super exciting. There's a there was a 16 new boys team as well, and they uh they had an awesome game. They came back from, I think they were down 24, maybe in the third quarter and just, mm -hmm. just played phenomenal. Like some of these uh, games, would, I swear you could have like scripted it in a, in a Hollywood movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> so right. That 16, that 16 U game comes down to a kid needing to hit both free throws with like five, six seconds left. Oh, wow. <laughs> Those are beaters. And, and he goes, nails them. Hit them. Oh, even gets a, you know, the time out in the middle. Hits them both. That was a father and son. Uh, uh, his dad was the coach. Uh, kid hit him. Uh, if you look in this picture way in the back, you might like some people might recognize Leroy Fairbanks there, to the to the with the hat on, <laughs> person in, in Leech Lake. And then to his left is his son, uh, Leroy the fourth. And then way down below, this little witty guy there. That's his son Dominic. So it was, you know, when you talk about the the experiences you create. Through something like this, right? This, you know, what what that family experience right there was, mm -hmm. is what it's all about, you know. And if you look in front of me, my my boy got to hang, you know. So he was just a little guy back then. So. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing, man. 
That's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Love to hear the stories of our victories and triumphs, uh, certainly as they do in, in past times. These, to me, are our modern warriors. You know, these young yeah. gentlemen, these young women, these young okay. uh, athletes are definitely, you know, blazing a trail and they're making history and they're making the world know that we're here. They're uh, defining us uh, as a people, you know, making sure that we're recognized as equals and, and sometimes even as victors, you know, <laughs> so uh, yeah. as, the, as the greatest, if you will. So that's really yeah. Hey, you know, that brings up a, a, a quote that I that I came across recently here and was that it, it's not that the res are, are the reservations are native kids don't have talent they they just lacked opportunity mm -hmm. and that's kind of why I really pushed for this because interestingly enough when I when I was pushing to be to get Team Minnesota to these games in 2017 they said why don't you just come to the games and see what it's like and then start organizing for 2020 all right and I was like, okay, that sounds cool. I said, but no, I, I think these kids can, you know, make some noise up there. So <laughs> I would have just took that advice, organized for 2020, and then we all know what happened in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. Right. There was no games. Right. So now, you know what I mean? We, we would have missed this opportunity. And, and so I'm really glad for the opportunity that, that you know, these people trusted that I could, that I could pull this off and, and and get a team up there, you know, because it's a little different, you know, crossing the borders. It's uh, there's a lot to it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's one thing traveling with a team, anyways, but yeah, crossing the yeah. border, fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> travel twelve cars deep, you know. <laughs> Where are you everything, <laughs> man, man, and then, then the other thing, you know, every, everything went great up there. There was no complaints uh, on our teams, on our kids. You know, uh, we did get scolded a little early because uh, the the lot of some of the winds you know but uh but that's kind of how it goes sometimes i guess you know so so i was super proud of our kids for for that aspect of, of you know behaving you know having fun and, and within within all the all the uh, all the rules you know toronto is huge man it's uh it's as big as new york city i think seven million people up there Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you take some res kids, you know, up to Toronto. I was, I was a little bit scared at first. But... <laughs> a little bit. Uh, <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily I, I sat next to two. Uh, they were only, the only, uh, at the organizational meetings leading up to the games, I, I sat by, uh, there was two old guys and one was from Wisconsin. Uh, Man, Manny might know him, uh, Dwayne. Okay. He was the organizer for many years way back when, but, uh, and then uh, Team California had, had, had a guy, and they were like, hey, as long as you you organize a team that's going to come up here and, and do chaperone, you know, they're not coming up here to be tourists, they're not coming up here to party, you're going to be all right. So I was like, oh, cool, I know some people like that, you know. So I sought out people who I was watching do take teams, you know, cross-country to trips, right? Go to Navi, go to, go to Nationals down in Florida. So so I asked those people if they would help, and then they all willingly helped out, man. And, and the theme was stick together, and the kids went up there, man, we, we, we stuck together, you know. And coaches did, did phenomenal with, with our kids on and off the court. So I'm super thankful for, for my team, and I got a lot of them coming back, you know, mm -hmm. part of this, and and then also got to find new uh coaches as well you know because uh you know we're, we're we're doing this for the kids right it's an amazing <laughs> opportunity so yeah i definitely um one of the articles that was written uh, about you particularly in your experience uh in coaching and going to the naig uh one of the things that you mentioned was um encouraging the teams to not only represent represent the Ogichi dog which means warriors uh, the name on the jersey but the red lake nation as a whole as well as their families and to me that quote really really i can't you know echo that enough uh to say you know when we go out into these places that are not our home communities we are uh, inadvertently representing you know our home communities and our families and we carry we have to carry ourselves with honor with respect and with um with good intentions you know because we're out there representing whether we know it or not and you know the world it may not be fair to say like we should be responsible for carrying the weight of all of our representation but it does you know and, and it's it's sad to say that many times we get um a lot of the negative stereotypes implemented into our our existence you know so for us we can change that narrative by being good beings we're being respectable by being uh formidable athletes and and of course uh, but also in the context of being in a foreign place being respectful being um very very uh 
I don't know what <laughs> well-mannered, you know, like you're saying, ambassadors. You know, they're, they're, yeah. Ambassadors for your nation, essentially, you know, so that's very true is that Good like, right. I can't say, yeah. uh, echo that enough, you know, when we go out into these public spaces, you definitely represent. And it's not to say that like, you know, everything that you're going to do is going to reflect the nation, you know, but also keep in mind, that's the way the world is going to see it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So, Behave. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and then yeah, again, so it's, some way really, really push a, 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 to our athletes up here. Mm -hmm. Is is sportsmanship, you know, mm -hmm. win or lose, man. You know, I, I you gotta know how to win first. You know what I mean? You can you gotta do it with, with 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 sportsmanship, and then you also gotta lose with sportsmanship, you know. And and for the most part, man, the, the kids have been great. You know what I mean? We've got lots of compliments throughout the years on our teams. You know, they they oh man, your team look like they're having the most fun. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm one of the. <laughs> It's all about that etiquette. <laughs> yeah, man. No, our, our kids. Yeah. So we, uh, in all the years, you know, we, we've, we've got, it's been that way, you know, getting, getting complimented on, on our play and the refs, you know, getting compliments from refs, you know, mm -hmm. so we awesome. kind of preach, preach that as well. And our kids have responded very well. So I'm, uh, right. we really hold out to them because the coach can say all anything, you know what I mean? You could, you right. could talk till you're blue in the face, but if the kids don't, don't you know, <laughs> You know, so so hats off to, to all the boys and girls, man, throughout the years, you know. Right. Do you have any uh, social media you want to plug in here or uh, for like either yourself or, you know, like your campaign or for the NAIG? Well, you know, for the NAIG, man, would be the, the Team Minnesota Facebook page. Oh, yeah, we got that on here. <laughs> cool, cool. That's that. Uh, there, there's uh, I, I do this other one, Red Lake Youth Sports is where we kind of Kind of share a lot of uh, what, what we're doing here in, in the community of Red Lake in, in particular. And, um, you know, but and then I got I got to vote Chris Jordan for school board. Page. Okay. Oh, there's a page? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I got, I got that page as well. But um, so I kind of, I use that one to communicate. You know, it's another thing that, that I, I truly believe in is communicating. You know, you have to communicate. And during COVID, communication was was more crucial than ever, you know, because there's so much misinformation out there, right? Mm -hmm. And rumors, you know, and just the way people were reacting at, at different times throughout it all, you know, I was like, we're we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of fires. I mean, there's a lot of fires out there, and if we don't say anything to put them out, you know what I mean? They're they're just gonna they're gonna they're who knows what they're gonna turn into. So. So I really believe in communication with, with staff, with the community, uh, with the kids as well, you know? So, so that's, uh, that's, I'm going to push more of, hopefully if, back in, you know, is to continue that and uh, teach uh, some of the stuff that, that you hear about a lot, like the financial literacy, right? Our schools aren't teaching that. So I was like, okay, if I get back in there, I think then that I can make it happen. You know, I, I, I know people, who that's what they do. They teach that, you know, they're certified in that. So they're willing to come help. And, and, uh, and also uh, scholarship opportunities for some kids to uh, that are going to go into business. You know, that that's a field that I really believe in is, is we need, uh, we need to be entrepreneurs again. Oh yeah. You know, our people are very entrepreneurial, you and know, innovative. Yeah. So so, and, and then, and that uh, just, it, it, it has a way of, of making life a little bit easier, even though it's more challenging. So I want to push more kids into that because usually we just kind of push them into kind of the, the normal things, right? Mm -hmm. Go to college, go to a uh, trade school, you know, go, go work for somebody else. But we need, I, I would like to flip, uh, you know, find some kids who want to go work for themselves and, and start their own business, you know? So that's uh another uh, program that I have that, that I want to implement if, uh, if given the chance, you know. Absolutely. For sure. You definitely have uh, a good set of morals and uh, lessons that you're uh, putting forth to the next generation. And certainly a lot of them are picking them up, uh, as we can tell from their experiences at the NAIG. And of course, as you mentioned, even before, you know, you would let your game do the talk, you know, like, you know, you leave it all on the floor, respect the officials and the opposing teams and definitely let your let your game do the, the talking for you because you don't have to be disrespectful. You don't have to be any type of way uh, other than simply let your game <laughs> do the walking for yeah. you and carry yourself 
yourself with respect, you know, be a humble winner, be a humble loser, you know, same both ways, you know, so that's a really yeah. good thing. Um, especially also even in the sense that you definitely teach people uh, with the notion of, like you said, you know, like they encourage you to just come yourself, you know, but you took a chance, you took a, a moment of, of, of a decision and you made a choice and you went with it and you followed through. And sometimes we get caught up in, in our, in ourselves and our fears and our doubts, you know, like, oh yeah, maybe I won't even start, you know, like I won't even take that first step, but take that first step, take that, you know, initiative and make it happen because look what you did, look what you've done with these youth and look what this, you know, it's turning into, you know, that, that potential. And I encourage anybody to take that first step, you know, uh, picking up the ball, picking up a racket, picking up uh, whatever it might be, a pen, a pad and art hoops, hoops. Yeah. Like anything you that you, uh, you know, find yourself uh, passionate about, like you're saying, you know, that might be something that you can start a career with and eventually find yourself in a much more uh, happy place rather than working for somebody else for, you know, pennies to the dollar and like barely getting by, you know, so yeah. um, I just want to take a moment to um, remind everybody if they haven't done so already to sign in uh, the last chance to get your name into the draft, uh, the raffle for today. And we also are going to take a moment with Chris to do our fast five. And so what the fast five is is basically we just ask you five questions or whatever comes off the top of your head that's what we're going to get and we appreciate <laughs> the long the short everything in between uh even if there's stories and you know there's good good experiences from these and so uh, we'll let manny take the first three and i will take the last two all, all right. right chris you're in the hot seat <laughs> first question who's your all favorite right. basketball player of all time kevin garnett you Evan took, Garnett. You took my question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your favorite KG. native movie. Favorite what? Your favorite native movie. Favorite native movie would have to be Powell Highway. Woo! Ooh. We had Gary Farmer on our show earlier too in season. Really? Yeah, yeah, he was on yeah. here. You're in great. I got to uh, I got to climb Bear Butte once as oh uh, wow. 17, 18 years old it was one of the coolest things ever. And uh hey, that's where Fulbert put his yeah. <laughs> so everybody will ask you, right? Did you find the candy bar? Yeah. <laughs> Is it still there? <laughs> I wasn't gonna go back and check, but I was like, yeah, I the so third was, and final uh, one for me is where has been your uh, your favorite venue to play ball at or like coach ball at, I should say, that you've been at. <laughs> oh man. Or one that you would like to. I would say probably so last, I think it was November, we got to take our uh sophomore squad down to the target center oh so i don't know who's familiar with the pace setter organization but we we've been playing in tournaments since since i first started coaching um so they kind of make it for 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 uh the younger kids especially to the you have a you have a little format where you win a tournament you advance you know so there's regions there's state and then um so our, our uh Sophomore boys qualified for the state tournament. So we we played two games over in St. Paul. The championship game was on the Target Center floor. Oh, you're too kind. Whoa. You're just saying that because we're here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, I, I you know, I was in and at uh, but but as so that was as far as the venue, you know, they had the so they did starting lineups, they uh, had an announcer playing on the floor, of course, you know, but as far as um the, the 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 coaching one would have to be up in Toronto, even though that gym was horrible. It was hot as Toronto, <laughs> and and uh, it wasn't the biggest. Just just the 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 atmosphere of it, you know, the fans, the the kids battling hard. That was probably my my most uh, uh, fun coaching experience. Might have been up there coaching that gold medal game up in Toronto. Wow, yeah. Cool. Right on. All righty. One of my favorite questions. I love to eat myself. So I'm curious, what is your favorite either traditional dish from where you're from or from abroad from your travels? Where have you been? Well, I, I guess I'd have to go with, uh, as far as traditional food, I'm a, uh, I like the chicken wild rice soup, mm. <laughs> uh, especially in Mystic Lake. Right. <laughs> they know what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> they got yeah. nothing working there. It's good. It's good. Yeah. So, um, but I also, uh, of course, red leg walleye. You know what I mean? You can't beat that. You know, you can't. Nope. But I, I uh, made a joke earlier about a grill master. But I, I really like to uh, to uh, cook and smoke foods as well on on my smoker. So uh, we we do a lot of different meats and uh, so as far as food, man, I'm uh, I'm all over the place, man. You know, I've uh, 
we were just in Halifax, you know, so sampled some seafood. Ooh. It was, yeah. yeah, tried some uh, squid, some scallion, you know. When in Rome, right? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> eat as the Romans do, is that what they say? Yeah. <laughs> eat what the Romans eat? Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. So food is, uh, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's I love food, I guess. Good food. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. And my last question for you would be, um, if you could play ball with or against anybody, who would you play ball with or against? Mm, play ball. I guess, you know, I, so I grew up a, a Celtic fan, you know, Larry, Larry Bird, but uh, speaking of Celtics, you know, it was really cool to learn a lot about uh, uh, Bill Russell. You know, I, I didn't know a lot about Bill Russell until recently. You know what I mean? I knew about the rings. I knew about, <laughs> I didn't know about, about a lot of uh, the, th the things he did, you know what I mean? As a champion for civil rights, man. So I think it would be cool to, uh, to uh, you know, go go back and play with somebody like that, and, and just kind of pick their brains on. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Man. With yeah. us, you know, like you're saying, you get to have those conversations, and I think that's really cool. Like you're talking about, uh, we have social engagement that happens when we play ball, when we play sports, when we compete uh, in a in a in a fun manner with each other. You know, like that we have this ability to uh, engage with each other. Uh, especially through sports. And I think that's something that's really amazing that you definitely highlight and encourage people to be a part of. So mm -hmm. that, that's very good. Awesome. So we have a uh, picker wheel here with uh, the names of the sign-ins for the folks that I have signed in for today. And we're going to have you reach forward and just touch the screen so we can get this picker, picker wheel spinning. All right, go ahead and reach and touch your screen. I think you touch it. Oop, there it goes. There's your arm. Okay, good. <laughs> My screen or your screen? I touched your yeah. screen. <laughs> you touched my screen. <laughs> Boom. All right. And so we got a name here. I don't know if you can read it, but I think I'll turn around and I'll read it. Can I read it? Oh, no. Spin that again. Oh, oh. sorry. One more. Sorry. <laughs> Ended up on my name. <laughs> and this one says, I'm not sure if you can read that. Can you read that? Oh, I can. Okay. We have... Tasha, Tasha, Tashia, Tasha Hart. All right, congratulations. Thank you very much for signing in and joining us this evening. Uh, we encourage everybody to share with your friends and family that we have an opportunity to learn about a lot of our indigenous uh, artists, athletes, uh, musicians, um, people that Coaches. are making moves in the world, you know? So that's a really amazing thing. Uh, we appreciate everybody for uh, signing in, of course, and tuning in every week. Share this with your friends and family. And of course, a special thank you to Chris Jordan for joining us this evening and sharing your stories with us. We appreciate your time and hopefully we'll see you all again down the road at another tournament maybe hopefully at the yeah. end cool right on thank you that's and it thank you us. guys man <laughs> yeah thank you all right appreciate you guys have a good one you, you too. too see you take care